Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to share how to start building a static web app. In my previous sessions, I have already explained what is a static web app, how you can start with Azure DevOps, and this session is for beginners only. And I will try to demonstrate you how you can start building static web apps with the help of Azure, Azure DevOps, and Visual Studio Code. And we will use a static web app CLI as well. So let's start without wasting time. So we know the basic structure of a static web app will contain a static content, for example, HTML pages, JavaScript and CSS, and it also contains API, but we will use the same typical structure. Uh, we will use the HTTP trigger that will act as a server side processing or that will work for us as an API. There are some prerequisites, for example, you should be having Azure account, Azure DevOps account, and Visual Studio Code should be installed on your machine with the following extensions like Azure Repos and Azure Static Web App extension. And then we will also see we will create repo locally, we will add HTML content, and we will use the SWA CLI for initiating, building, and start the app. And we will also create HTTP trigger and we will test and we will finally push this repo to our Azure DevOps. And I strongly recommend you to watch the previous video of Azure DevOps where I have sh already showcased you how you can start step by step uh, use of Azure DevOps and our blank repo was already created in our previous session. So let's just start without wasting time. Let me open my Visual Studio code. Visual Studio is open now and if I show you what are the extensions that I have already installed? So if you will see here, uh, I have Azure repos, right? And uh, I have Azure Static Web App CLI and we have C Sharp, right? So these are the three main that you should be having with your Visual Studio Code. Now, because our repo is already blank, this is my Azure DevOps account. And you can see here, this is my organization techweb.org and under that we have a project techweb and under that we have this blank repo and you can see there is no file right and there is no branch where if you will see there is no branches but I can just copy this URL in case I want to set the origin from my Visual Studio code. Let's go back to the Visual Studio code. So what I will do I have created one folder on my local machine that I will use in this session. I will click on open folder. Here I will select a folder that contains a simple HTML file. So this is our folder. Select this TechWeb folder and this folder contains only one single file which will not be displayed here but I will show you. So the, the moment I select this folder and select folder right. So under that you will see there is only one file which is index.html right and it contains some basic html here i will explain this uh, html later but what is important here we know to create the static web app we first need to have some html obviously because the static web app contains two things one is html css javascript part and another one is the api part now if we go step by step we have our html page but we haven't created any repo yet so let me go to my terminal first and we will create the repo first, right? So we will use git initialize command, right? So our at least our git repo is created. And if I check the git status here, so it is saying there is one untracked file, right? So we will add this file into a repo locally by using this command git add space dot. So now this file is added. Now we have to commit the changes. Git commit hyphen m on we can mention here first change, right? Hit enter. So now my changes are committed. Now we have to push this repo because our remote branch is completely blank. So first we need to create a branch that will be called we will call that our master branch right so it says master is already exist we have to set the origin so for to set the origin we will use the command git remote add origin and our repo name 
so now the origin is set our branch is set now we only need to push the content that we have created so far to push these changes we will use the command git push hyphen s origin master and if i hit enter so all the changes that we have just created all those push to my master branch right but there are more things that we need to do here only html content is here what about the api the backend api and we haven't used so far anything related to SWA CLI. so we will use the SWA this time and we will use SWA init and the moment I use the command SWA init so it is asking for what name would you like to use for your static web app configuration right so we are using the Azure static web app CLI version 1.1.1 right so it is asking for okay are you okay with the configuration name then I hit enter and now it is saying okay the ap app location is it is dot it, it means it is the root at at root level and when we are saying output location it is again dot api location there is nothing at this point of time so we can enter y here okay now you can see the moment i press y there are a few changes that we can track so index one we have already pushed earlier but new swa cli config.json is created if I click on this and if I show you so it contains our app location and output location it doesn't contain anything related to API that we need to do okay now it is also just suggesting if you want to deploy just use the SWA deploy command and if you want to start you should use SWA start command but till this point we have okay SWA uh, CLI already initiated the SWA app configuration but we also need to add the API so for that so you can use the following command either you should use control shift P so you can use the following command either control shift P or you can also use the F1 command right and what you need to type over there is static web app creative HTTP function okay and the moment you select it will ask you to select the stack I mean you want to create on the basis of C sharp JavaScript TypeScript Python and Python programming model version v2 so I will select C sharp here okay then it will ask what name would you like to use okay so I will go with the existing one which is HTTP trigger and if I hit enter it is also saying okay this will be the namespace for your HTTP trigger I hit enter now it is asking who can uh, you know about access right setting so at this point of time I am just making it anonymous right so you can see here the API folder is created and all the settings are also created right and we can see our HTTP trigger function right and if I go here let me close this for a moment and it is also asking there are some unresolved dependencies so should we restore yes we want to restore I just click on restore one so meanwhile it is restoring let me go through you the content which is created in this HTTP trigger right so this HTTP trigger is a serverless function right that we are using and this is the function name and here you can see we are just logging and saying C sharp HTTP trigger function processed and then what response we will get if we call the API okay so you can see this is also expecting some parameter but this is very simple demo so what I will do and I will remove the extra part and okay it, there is HTTP trigger function executed successfully so this response we should get once we HTTP trigger as our save these changes so if we go to our solution what are the things that we already have at this point of time so VS Code also created the initial configuration here and under API, we API CS proj, it contains all the references that we need to run this Azure function, right? We have host.json and we have local settings.json as well. But the more important is SWA CLI and here we also need to provide what is our API location because this is the main configuration for a static web app, right? So if I type here API 
location yes we have this so the here we need to provide the folder name okay now i am saying my api is available under api folder and i will just save these changes right now if i go back to my terminal right and we can see in the output everything is restored successfully and if i go here there's no red lines right so now my function is ready but what are the commands that i need, I need to use before start we all we also need to make some changes what changes i am talking about for example if i go to my html page here right in this sample html you will see we have a javascript section and this is a very simple one we have one h1 element we have one paragraph element right and in this we have one button that says load content from api correct and we have a one placeholder where our content will be loaded from the api and how we are calling we are calling through javascript right and this is a very traditional uh, javascript to call any you know http request so here we are creating http request using javascript we are providing the get request and we are providing the URL which will be API message but instead of message here we need to provide the API route and in our case it is HTTP trigger one which is the name of our function right so let me just save these changes so I am also providing the content type that I am using here which is application JSON right and I am also saying okay just use the element name and in that whatever response that we are getting we just set it to inner html part okay of that element and if you see what is name here name is nothing it is our placeholder okay right we are also logging the response that whatever we are going to receive all right so now we have i think all the configuration i think ready and now we can use that to start this SWA app. So we just need to use the command SWA start and hit enter. The moment we enter, the moment we enter, it will start building the respective API that we have just created, which is actually a HTTP trigger and also make all the required configuration. So we, so this, our a static web app application can also access the API as well. So we can see here, our static content is available at this path and our API is also available at this path. And we got this URL. So let me click on this. So we can see this, uh, content that we uh, created in our HTML. And if I click here, load content from API. So it is exactly showing okay this http trigger function as api executed successfully and api called successfully right and if i go back to my visual studio and if i check this is exactly the same message that which is mentioned in azure function right the http trigger function as api executed successfully and just to stop this uh, static web app we just use the control c so now our application is stopped and if I go to the browser again, and if I click here, load content, now, because, because our API is stopped, and if I click here, load content from API, then it will display the app is offline, which is because we have stopped our API. Correct. Now, all changes are ready. Now, what I will do as a final command, I have to push these changes to the Azure DevOps, right? So there are multiple ways one thing is i can just provide the comment here i mean one way you have already seen you can we can push the code through command that we have already seen this time i will use the visual studio editor to do this okay final swa changes correct and we can just commit and push and that's it it is showing the branch master has no remote branch would you like to publish this branch then we will say yes okay now it is pushing our changes so what will happen in few seconds we will be able to see all these changes in our azure devops no for example and let me go back to the browser and if i go here previously there was nothing here and if i refresh this browser 
Now I'm able to see my master branch and if I go inside we can see all the changes that we have just performed. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation and we created a HTTP trigger, we test the changes and we push our repo and we have seen how initially it looks like we load the content from the API and when the API is stopped then we got the app is offline right so i hope you enjoy the session if you have any question any comment you can drop into the comment box i will try to reply on that as soon as possible and i will see you in the next video where we will discuss how you can use this repo to deploy onto the azure portal and how you can access this site fully functioning and fully running on the azure service azure static web app service till then bye bye i will see you in the next video